I am entitled to the home that my husband and I built together and that this woman is the greedy one. I know Dr. Polo will see her for who she is and know that she completely betrayed my father. She took advantage of my late husband's condition and manipulated him and made me out to be a gold digger. After everything that she's done to my father, I want to make sure she doesn't get one more penny. Okay, let's get right to it. Donna, you are uh, suing your stepchild, Barbara. I assume she's your stepchild. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, and you are claiming 50% equity in an $800,000 house that was left by your deceased husband. Correct. Explain the facts to me and the basis of your claim. Well, I have a will, a last will and testament, that states that I am the sole beneficiary of the estate. Um, however, um, at my late husband's funeral, um, they started claiming that they had the right to set a state. Who are they? The children. H how many children? There are four. There are four children. Correct. From a prior marriage. Yes, ma'am. Let, let's clarify a couple of things. You are the second wife? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so he had a first marriage, mm -hmm. which had, and he had four children out, out of that marriage. Correct. And then he married you. Yes. For how long were you married? We were together for nine years and married for seven and a half. Okay, and so this home is the home that we had together, that we built together, and every single inch of that home was just about us. Okay, let me see that will. That's good. He does mention his children in, in this uh, will, mm -hmm. but he clearly states in paragraph number five that the whole estate goes to you. Yes. Was he, was he going through a terrible situation with his family, with his prior family, at the time he prepared this will? Yes, ma'am. What was happening? They cut him out completely. Cut him out because he was with me. Are you telling me that you were the reason why he separated from his first wife? He was not happy. I'm not the reason that he left her. Explain the situation. Well, we met nine years ago. Um, he was still married at the yes. time you met? From what I understand, yes. But when I met him, I didn't know. He didn't wear a ring, nothing. Okay. Um, we were at a party, and um, I was a friend of his colleagues, and I was there at the party, and we just started talking and hitting it off, and he's so charming and, you know, smart and witty, and, you know, we just started speaking, and then we started hanging out. I'm a stylist, so, you know, I styled his friend, and then we became friends, and I started styling his, his wardrobe for him. He just got a promotion. I wanted to make sure that he was in the finest clothes. And things just developed from there. At what time did you learn that he was married? About six months. And um, he told me that he was getting divorced and that, you know, that he was leaving. That he wife. was leaving his wife. How long, yeah. you know how long he'd been married? 35 years. A lot of years. Yeah. All right. So he, so he tells you at that point, like six months into the, your friendship, um, I'm getting a divorce after a 35-year marriage, four children, and he finally got divorced. Yeah. Was it a nasty divorce? Yeah. It was nasty. Yeah, he wasn't happy. It was litigated. Yeah. It was fought it's out. A, yes. Okay. You eventually get married. Mm -hmm. And uh, you bought this house during that marriage? He purchased it once they were getting divorced so that we can move in together. Okay, so he together. bought it prior to your marriage to him. Yes. All right. Nevertheless, you get married, mm -hmm. um, and then at some point in the year 2011, mm -hmm. he makes this will. Yes. Why did he make this will? Do you know that? Yes. Why? Um, Robert became very ill. What happened to him? He had Crohn's disease. Okay. Yeah. Since the children had cut him out completely and did not speak to him anymore, he thought that it would be right that because he had this terminal illness, that I was the sole executor of this home. So just in case something happened to him, because they told him of everything that could happen, 
through time. And, and he was, he was ill in the hospital for four months. And I was there by his side. Did his family come to visit, no. his children? No, they weren't speaking to us. He told me that not to bother them, they had their own lives, that they had already cut him off. He didn't want them involved. All right, was there any time during his illness that he became disoriented, incompetent? No. Uh, was he conscious at all time yes. up to the time of his death? Absolutely. When did he die after this will? Um, he Do you have his death died certificate? six years late. No, I don't. I couldn't get his death certificate. Why? They kicked me out of their funeral and I could not, like they wouldn't let me in the building. But you're his wife. I know. You had every right. I know. Well, I mean, legally, you had every right to, to procure, receive his death certificate. When did he die? May 26. Okay. So, he dies May 26, 2017. To your knowledge, between 2011 and 2017, was he sound of mind? Was he conscious, clear-minded, good judgment? He was very ill in the last six months of his life. Um, barely able to walk. Um, unfortunately, I was not there most of the time because I was traveling because of business. Um, well, so he, he moved in with them to take care of him. And I had to continue working. Did, did you have a problem with him? at that time? No. During the last six months of his life? No, not at all. No, it was his wishes to make me continue my, my life. dream, my life. I was, you know, I'm, I'm so young, I'm 35 years old. How many years older than you was he? He's much older. He's, he was 77 at the time of his death. Okay, all right. I'm starting to think I know what's happening here. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll hear more about it. You think this is a, a healthy relationship? I, I, I mean, no, no, no. We're not talking about healthy relationships here. We are talking about money and bank accounts and access and marriage. I mean, your father well, married this he woman. he basically ended up with nothing. Second marriages are very difficult, and they can present very serious problems when it comes to our estate. Excuse me, Dr. Polo? Uh, may I show you some paperwork, uh, just to show you that she definitely didn't have a problem with him? Uh, because this is the, uh, the money that she withdrew from his account, and uh, all the money that she maxed out on his credit cards uh, without him knowing. So she definitely never had a problem with him because her entire lifestyle completely changed when they met. But he was aware that she had ab absolute access to his, to his accounts. Yes. No, no, he, he knew that yes, she had access. Yes, of course he knew. But right? look, look what's going well, on I, here. I can tell that there, you know, there, there are a number of big withdrawals here, no doubt about it. But I mean, if you give somebody access to your account, I mean, you're giving them full access. That means you take the money you need or take the money you want out of here. Don't you think it means that? Yes. You think this is a, a healthy relationship? Uh, I mean, no, no, no. We're not talking about healthy relationships here. We are talking about money and bank accounts and access and marriage. I mean, your father well, married this he woman. he basically ended up with nothing. He, do you, do you realize that she basically emptied his accounts and needed to pay for medicine and needed to pay hospital bills. And, and no... she was spending his money on hair and nails when he was dying. But, this but, is what but was happening. Wait, but wait a minute, he could have picked up the phone, call his bank and say, hey, listen, get her out of my account. I want no more access. If you're the owner of a bank account, you have every right to call the bank and take out whomever you had added before so they don't have access to your accounts. And I'm, and I'm here. So uh, what you're arguing here to me, it's irrelevant. In other words, whether she took all the money out or not, that, that was your father's choice. If he was competent, he could have acted. Now, you know what I want to know? How was your relationship with your father? It was great. 
So what she's telling me is a lie? We discontinued speaking to him because once he got a promotion about nine years ago and he met her, mm -hmm. he turned into a completely different person. Okay. So all of a sudden his values were changing. All he was thinking about was money. And we kind of came to an agreement that it didn't make any sense for us to speak anymore because our mother was cheated on. And we just didn't understand what was going on. Um, so instead you know, of trying to... I have difficulty to, with that yeah. kind of concept in life. <laughs> because I'll tell you this, marriage is really, it's a contract between adults. A contract that is based upon love and material decisions. This is why people get married. First of all, because they love each other. Secondly, because they've agreed to share material things in one way or another. And I think that when children stop talking to their parents because one of them hurts the other spouse, it's an immature decision. Um, you should keep a relation with your father because he was a good father or you love him or you don't love him. But to stop talking to him because he fell in love with another woman. It wasn't my personal choice to discontinue speaking to my father. It was my mother's choice, and I felt out of respect that was the best thing to do. So I, your mother asked you guys to stop talking to your dad, and you all agreed? Yes. Oh, my God, what a world we live in. As adults. <laughs> <laughs> this family situation seems very complicated. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll feel more about it. My father did not leave her the home. My father rewrote the will because he woke up and realized what mattered. Blood, nothing matters more than blood. Do you know what this means? This is the first time I've heard of this document, other than whatever claims they made well, during the Let me tell you why this is the first time you heard of this document. Apparently for the last six months of your husband's life, you disappeared. claims that she has a will prepared in the year 2000. Let's get to the point. Let's get to the issue of this case. I'd love to. All right. She claims that she has a will that seems to be legitimate, genuine, uh, signed in the year 2011, making her the sole beneficiary of your father's estate. Why are you asking for 50% of the will instead of the whole amount? I don't get it. Well, at the funeral, they were claiming that they had drafted something up and that they're going to take me to court and that they were going to put me through the ringer and that I wasn't going to have another dime left and that everything that, you know, I made while I was with him, you know, any, any piece of art or anything that was in that home, they were going to strip it away from me. Well, how could they do that? They don't even have access to that house. We Isn't don't want any house? of that. Wasn't that your house? Yes. Didn't you have a key to the house? Yes. But they were claiming that it belonged to them. But because claims are claims. I know. They're not reality. How People did can the claim home, anything. So because she lived in the home, it's her home as well? She your didn't purchase the home. Your father left her the home. My father did not leave her the home. My father rewrote the will because he woke up and realized what mattered. Blood. Nothing matters more than blood. Obviously. Let's look at this. So apparently in the year 2017, April 21st, one month before his death, correct? Yes. Your father now prepares a second will where he says, Mm, all the res residue and remainder of my estate, both real and personal, of whatsoever kind, uh, give a device with good to my four children to be theirs absolutely and forever. My house is to be divided amongst my four children and my spouse, Donna. Do you know what this means? No. Well, it means that the house is now to be divided into five equal parts. But and I was what, his sole executor. What, what would of be the, the will? problem with that? Really? I wasn't even present for you this. Were what? I was not present for this document. You, I, this do, is the do, first do time I've heard of this. Do you understand that you don't need to be present for a will to be prepared? 
knowing him. I mean, even, I even mean, when really. you're married, your spouse can go ahead and prepare he, a will, disinherit you. Now, your only, your only argument against this would be to say that he was incompetent when he prepared this and that he was forced to do this. I think he was. No, he, but you have no evidence. I'm but proposing he was the not argument. He was you ill. didn't propose it to me. But he was ill. Crohn's disease has to do with your intestines. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do, to do with, with your, your brains. And again, you have you brought any experts to tell me that this is not his signature? That that you have a psychiatric report or a doctor's report saying that he was in, Incompetent, no, ma'am. Unable I, to there think. There was no reason for me to. I. This is the first time I've heard of this document, other than whatever claims they made well, during the funeral. Let me tell you why this is the first time you heard of this document. Apparently, for the last six months of your husband's life, you disappeared. This case is definitely a competition between two wills. When we come back, the ruling. Don't go away. Every single inch of that house has memories of my life with him, the nine years that we spent together. And she, she's gonna take everything that's inside as well. That is unfair. This case is definitely about a will competition. It seems to me, I don't like to speak of the dead, but why not? They leave wills behind, so we might as well speculate. You know, this was a very reactive man. Your father was a reactive guy. You know, when he fell in love or whomever was being nice to him at the time, he would prepare documents in their favors. And then when they would do something bad to him, he would change those documents again. And, and what evidence do I have? This is it. I have the evidence right in my hand. First, he prepares you a will, leaving you everything and excluding his children from leaving everything. The, the home. And now you leave him the last six months of his life. And what does he do? A month prior to his death, he prepares a will. Again, leaving something for his kids. And hey, by the way, he didn't hate you that much. He included you. If he included you after everything you did, after all the money that was but taken that's, out. That's why I'm here. I'm here to claim that I should at least get half of what the home is worth. <laughs> but it's who half. says I'm, half? Why half? Where did you get that number? If I mean, it's if clear. You, he said it here. He says, I am leaving my house, and only the house, by the way. The residue of the state goes to you guys. In other words, which, which the I contents have. of the house, whatever bank accounts he had left, any life insurance if he had any. The contents of the house, too? Well, that's what he says in Every this single will. thing that he and I went, and we, we would go to galleries do you together. Have, do you have possession of this house? Yes. Well, you should have cleared out that house before coming here today, girl. You got to act in life. You don't act. 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 Because of my, this is my at. home where I lay my head down to rest. Yeah, but he when laid I it down for back. you. Are you where, kidding where me? Where were you when you were purchasing the house? When you were making okay. where this was home? I? Where yeah. was I making this home? Waiting I was for him to we put it up for you. We were making these decisions All together. All the rest of my estate, both real and personal, of whatsoever kind, of character, and wherever situated, I give device and bequeath to my four children to be theirs absolutely and forever. My house is to be divided amongst my four children, Steve, McLaurin, Jamie, Barbara, Laura, and my spouse, Donna Davis. What is the problem? What is the problem? The problem that is that every single inch of that house has memories of my life with him, the nine years that we spent together. And she, she's gonna take everything that's inside as well. That is unfair. That's not, I didn't write it. My father <gasps> believes in everything being equal. Everybody getting even amounts. You even know? amounts? Yeah. You're my taking father? everything from listen, inside. Listen. My father. Please, <laughs> let me tell you this. You have no evidence to present to me. I'm looking at both these signatures. They look similar to me. 
Um, they had to manipulate him to do that. This one looks a little frail, that. but then again, it was a month prior to his death. That means he was sick. Uh, he why was would ill. It, why would have we manipulated our father when Illness he was dying? Illness has nothing to you do with around. competency. For okay. years. This house is going to be put in the market. Uh, he states in here that it's, val it's valued at $800,000. I don't know that it is. We can appoint three appraisers, get three appraisals of the house, and do an average, figure out what it's worth, sell it. Your Honor, I at least... When we get I... the net proceeds, it'll be divided in five equal parts. <laughs> One part for each of your brothers and sisters, whatever, and another part for her. That barely, How can you not I believe can, in I that? Cannot. I cannot. I cannot believe in that. That's so human. That is so human. That is my father. There's nothing but else to this case, my people. I am so sorry. I have one advice. Please, get your affairs in order, especially if you have a second marriage, if you have children from another marriage, from a prior marriage. Do it in time. Be clear about it. Do it when you have a clear mind, a sound mind. Be careful enough to stay that if you have pieces of art, you make a list which you can attach to your will and uh, leave it to whomever you really want in life. But don't leave things up in the air because once you're dead, your family's gonna be fighting all over the place. And that's such a nasty feeling. I mean, that's what you leave behind. That's the memory you're gonna leave, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're selling the house and divide it in five equal parts. And that is how I rule.